Um, one of the most serious articles we've looked at here. Uh, you up for looking at a bit of um, news headlines? Because we'll come to the Golden Visa in a minute. About sure. which we've said one or two things in the past. Yeah, yeah. Um, let's, let's um, oh, and there's a duct tape conversation going on as well. True. Uh, yeah, I think uh, the drivers of the world or the DIYers of the world can come to, just in the way that people used to go from the UK to France on a booze cruise, you can probably come here to a Chinese shop cruise and get all that st cheap stuff and drive it back again as well. So wait till you're in Portugal next time, uh, Ian Turner, for your cable ties and duct tape. 93% of citizens believe corruption in Portugal is common practice, is what uh, is claimed here uh, by Natasha Don in a news article from a couple of days ago. And this will be um, a fully featured uh, in-print article in the print version of the resident i think later on this week and uh euro barometer then uh this uh is, a, is an organization that's looked into this their findings come on the day the pm shrugs off the latest corruption scandal on a day prime minister antonio costa stood in the lush gardens of a sintra palace minimizing the latest scandal involving suspicions of corruption allegedly practiced by a member of his own government a Eurobarometer specialist found that 93% of Portuguese citizens consider corruption to be a common practice in their country. What do you make of that from the get-go there then, Bobby? Do you, it, would you resonate with that? Are you surprised to hear that? I am, to be honest. Um, I, I can see maybe there's a perception of it. And, and I believe that there has been a couple of stories of late. Um, but if you go back, I'd say maybe about seven, eight years ago, there was a couple of scandals even with the Golden Visa thing, with the, within CEF. And basically, there was a big scandal to say that SEF was letting through um, sort of by way of brown envelopes, people that shouldn't have been brought into the Golden Visa or brought into the Golden Visa. Yeah. And uh, uh, are either they were expedited or whatever it might be. So they stopped everything for about nearly two years. And I mean, they really stopped everything. And uh, they actually did a whole huge inter uh, investigation because this was a an article that had came out, and when they found that after two years, it was bullshit. Excuse my French, but it was <laughs> rubbish. Yeah. I think, to be honest with you, there is probably some of it. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes. I need one of them myself. But, uh, <laughs> That's how we should do it. Right. Yeah. But um, I think, to be honest with you, like, I've never come across an opportunity where basically you're able to speed anything up by, by sort of doing it. But of late, I've heard one in Porto where somebody got a watch and um basically it's, it's it was all over the news some guy got looking for planning uh gave a nice watch or something to some planning that's guy so sweet that's so old school isn't it a watch yeah and and to be honest with you like i i think i can understand why a lot of people are dissatisfied and i believe that dissatisfaction can sort of lead to saying that it's corrupt because when you're looking at the elite at the top and the people on the bottom are suffering Yes. And I don't even mean at the bottom, I mean all the way back down <laughs> at suffering. 99%, um, yeah. It, it, you're, looking, you're looking at it, and it is hard to look through the smiles and like you're, you're, you're feeling the pain, and um, you're getting angry. And when you're yeah. getting angry and someone asks you a question, well, how do you feel? Do you think there's a corruption in, in Portugal? 93% of people are probably going to say yes. Yeah. So it's, I think a lot of it comes out of... Um, the hurt that people and the pain that people are feeling right now as in an answer to a question because you can ask a question in any particular way of a poll to yes, yes. really look at the kind of answer you want to get if you turn around and say are you satisfied with your government you would have probably got the same answer i'd say so, it, would have been it would have been higher than 93 percent. So, so the thing is um i i genuinely don't believe corruption is uh, widespread in portugal i really really don't mm -hmm. um i know that from being in the golden visa market for a long long time before it, we really went into the development side of it everyone that we spoke to sort of were very rich people that were coming into portugal that were around say everyone's port but they, they had money and then you would have had the people who were extremely wealthy and they would have decided listen is there any way we can express like this by sort of giving someone a golden watch yeah, right. yeah. and it wasn't like it really wasn't there really was no sorry this is the way it works there is no and i think actually after the they had put the prime minister at that time into prison for um for basically given planning where he shouldn't have had and given well he, he actually i think he should have given it but why he gave it was the actual reason he went to prison i think more so than anything else and i think that scared the bejesus out of out of the rest of them you know and then it became everyone was already under guard all the, the civil servants were under guard with regards and i don't mean civil servants were corrupt but I, and i don't really believe any of them are 
And um, but you're always going to find in any sort of sort of place of power where yeah. people have have decision making um, somewhere that this will go on, but nowhere near what kind of percentage that this has been. Not I've actually never come across it. I've never come across it in my time in Portugal that it's it's been uh, even offered or suggested or um asked whatever i've never seen it uh, i've been in eastern europe and that's how you do business yeah you right you have to squeeze the wheels in eastern europe and this is going back even into early 2000s and so on I used to call them illegal structures where you have consultants who would help you expedite things hi <laughs> bobby says hi <laughs> Well, you could expedite um, things, and it was how you did business. Yes. <laughs> it was sort of like um, you had to pay someone to make sure that they got the planning or got the whatever thing, because if you didn't, you just didn't do business, and that's how it was done. Yeah. Everyone had to have, um, and you're talking coming out of the 90s when the Eastern Bloc was starting to break up, and you had sort of a lot of uh, local as well as uh, national politicians were all looking to sort of make their... Um, their careers and and their livelihoods based on the the opportunities that people were taking but they were sort of looking at it in the sense that well look i want to get in on the game too i have not seen anything like it here in portugal at all and that's been straight that's really great and reassuring to hear and i i, I think as you say and so often and more increasingly the case you know these uh these polls and headlines are proxies for something else, aren't they? This is this is a this is a stab at um, the elite, if you like, or or a, a display of dissatisfaction in another area of life, and this is the outpouring yeah. for it. I think there yeah. are some other there are some other factors here, though, aren't there? That, uh, and um, you know, as you said, it is it's just the way things are in some countries. Uh, and if you try and do business, you need to know about those ways of doing business in other countries. I grew up in Philadelphia, in the United States, for example. Um, and if the Portuguese want to know about corruption, they need to spend some time there. Don't think anything can touch it. So you've got these countries, haven't you, where they pretend not to be corrupt, but they absolutely are. They're probably your worst nightmare, aren't they? Whereas the Portuguese are very self-conscious about this. I mean, the fact that we're even asking the question is something, isn't it? What I found, and I've said this before on your show, is that optics is very important um, in the political spheres. And what I seem to be the case is that they look forward to the next election with regards to the optics of how they've performed. And what have they done that's either going to sort of delight or irritate the potential voter. Yeah. And, for example, if they're seen to be doing things that is sort of elitist, or doing things that's helping the elite, especially in the communist uh, areas, they're terrified to to expedite it. Let's say, and they won't, and they'll make you go to the ringer, and they'll make you, and probably uh, rightly so. Like I know I get annoyed with uh, the speed of things and so on and so forth, but they make you go through every boxes ticked and so on and so forth and so forth. Because later on, if someone does come and start pointing fingers and asking questions and why did you do this, and that, there's an actual record of why everything was done and where it was done and so on and so forth and everything was done above board uh, as it should have been um and i believe that where people believe that they don't need the optics or the optics don't matter or their their self-greed becomes above and their ego uh, which you might see a lot more in the states in the the upcoming elections as well and and um that kind of psycho babble but um, where they don't believe that uh, they have to sort of make sure they're doing the right thing is and that they're above that. That's yeah. where people feel they have the power to do things. And as I said before, politicians only have one job in mind. That's to get into power. And their second job is to stay in power. And um, <laughs> Oh, so helping people is not part of Is that the third job? Well, I think they have great intentions at the start. And right. But then when you get in, you know that you can't help people unless you're in power. Yeah. And so... If you're not in power, you can't bring forward what your agenda would have been for the people that you represent. And I think this is really where it's meant to go. And yes. I think that's what a lot of people believe to do and what to do. And you will always find the odd, um, <laughs> very odd person probably thrown into the middle of it, even being their intentions being well doing is doing more harm than good. And I think if you look at the, the, the current government, I just basically found that it's been a disaster uh, from day one. It looked great. They bought the last election, as far as I'm concerned. 
by the giveaway, which was normal. Yeah. They, had, they had the money to do so, which they got from the likes of the Golden Visa and the influx of tourism and so on and so forth. And then you had COVID, etc. And then you had bang, look at the mess we're in. Yes. And now you had a couple of issues with regards to um, where the government could have been brought to the, its knees by the, the president, but he, he didn't bring it to its knees because he, he knew it wasn't in the interest of the, con of the country. But I think the country will vote um vigorously i hope to do in the next election to correct it because this 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 country needs good people with good ideas um that is going to help everybody and not just the people that want to get the vote like you used to have this all say it or that i'm going to be the president of everybody you know everyone that <laughs> yeah. voted for me you know what i mean yes. so, yeah and, and that's and uh, this is the sort of way it is so Anyway, I, I just to go back, I don't think it's that widely spread, but you do have a couple of bad apples in every barrel. And yeah. I think the media are right to weed them out and and expose them for what they are. And it should frighten the bejesus out of the rest of them to make sure corruption isn't the way of it. So I, I tip my hat for people going after it, but I don't like the, the optics of saying that 93% of people say Portugal is corrupt. That's not true. That's far, far. I would say three percent of it thank you anyway yeah very good 100 uh, percent agree with bobby surveys can be constructed to get any response you want 94 percent say yes to are you satisfied with the government you'd struggle to get that uh, outcome but i think it is possible i get the point you're making there james uh, and uh, pete is in with a comment as well i think maybe this is a very interesting and i think excellent point pete I think maybe people are confusing overbearing, weighty, slow, clumsy bureaucracy for corruption. But undoubtedly, corruption exists everywhere and usually in public institutions. But the fact that TAP and other scandals come to light are slowly dealt with is good. But we know some awful corruption locally that went unpunished from the last recession. So it does go on as we're all as we're all grown ups here. We know it goes on wherever there are human beings and where there is money and power involved. And I think Pete's right there. You know, there is there is this self-consciousness about it, almost like a guilt and also remembering, you know, 50 years ago, uh, there was a different regime which was clearly corrupt and worked for only certain individuals and the elite. So that's in the DNA. And this thing, the, the I think the confusion of how things work on the basis of it is still important who you know in Portugal, isn't it? And I don't think that is seen um, indigenous, indigenously, if you like, as corruption. That is just the way things work. You know somebody who works in the local council, you know somebody who works in the government, and you speak to that person, don't you? I mean, that's not that's you, that's bored, that's nepotism or being well connected. It's not what you know; it's who you know. But that is, it's quite a stretch to call then call that corruption. I would say. Yeah, I, I found that not to be the case, though, in the sense that every I remember like. Every I have got this guy in the council who can actually help us, or I've got this guy who can speed things up, or I got this guy. It's not the case; it really isn't. Um, they've they got a guy who might be in the council, but he's going to do his job as per he's going to do his job, and that's it. Um, um, I really, genuinely haven't come across a sort of uh, it, look. You you know the the issues I've had even with Herr the Mayor getting things through. It's after taking me three years. And I'm still uh, waiting on the last piece of the, uh, document, three years to get uh, a license, you know. Um, so from my point of view, <laughs> there hasn't been a way or there's no way to do it, you know. So it, but, yes. but even like we had, we had a, a general meeting yesterday and, um, and we're planning what we call the, the allotments of, of the next development. And, but the, the person in charge in the camera will not talk to us until such time that she should is in that this is the actual time. To, so we're trying to get a pre-meeting. No, no, no. When you're ready, we're going to do it as it should be and da, 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 da. And no, that's the way it should be, you know? Yeah, yeah. And I don't mind that. If that's the case and, and they continue that, how you say, that that way of thinking through the process, that means I'll get through the process in a timely manner. Yeah. Um, and, but, and if they're like that for everybody, fair enough. And as far as I can see, that's the way it is. Because I, in the areas where we're building, we're looking around, and we don't see anyone else getting faster than us or moving quicker than us or whatever it is. We're all, and everyone who's developing in Portugal that I know has does nothing but give out about the speed of the process and everything else, which basically tells me that no one's found the, the magic way through it. So, 
is no need to take it personally then, uh, which is what this survey is. I think people have taken the, the uh, behaviour of politicians personally, uh, which gives us this uh, last paragraph here, and then we'll move on to golden visas in just a moment. Uh, according to Transparency Portugal, 78% of respondents believe that cases of high-level corruption are not sufficiently prosecuted in Portugal. 84% believe that in Portugal, favouritism and corruption harm business competition. Uh, it is a perception echoed by former Euro MP Anna Gomes, who said on her regular evening commentary slot on SICK television last night that Antonio Costa's response to questions on the latest corruption scandal were quite simply abhorrent. I'll put the link to that so you can see for yourself uh, later on uh, what you make of that. Let's move on to Golden Visas. And thank you for your insight, everybody, on that, and uh, especially you there, Bobby. Uh, and let's have a look. Uh, the Golden Visa thing, it just, I was described it earlier on, Bobby, as, um, you know, they tried to put the last few. It's like the Terminator, isn't it? They tried to put the last few nails in the coffin and it's pushing its way out of the coffin and running across the graveyard, it would appear. And uh, we've got some a bit of uh, news from the Portugal news here. Uh, what does it say? Um, oh, I, I think I've lost it again now. But it was to do with um, 403 million on golden visas between January and June. I will find the article. But what do you make of that headline? It doesn't surprise me. Um, people are people are trying to get in uh, before because again, it's the unsurety of this whole going visiting for the last uh, five years has been unsure. It's been a disaster, to be honest with you. The way they actually set it up was fantastic. The, the government before the existing government, or even the uh, the last government, and um, the government that brought this in had it. They really had it bang on. They they were responsible for the recovery of Portugal coming out of the mess of the two thousand and eight two thousand nine European uh economic uh banking crisis but um this last government was basically as i said before looking for optics and they were they were basically like, like that let's 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 do this let's do that and they kept changing their mind willy-nilly which basically panicked people left right and center and then you've got people from the development side who are buying land to develop or buying buildings to develop towards that type of investor in areas that they were told to invest. And then by the way, as soon as the board, and as you see, the planning process is not that fast here. So <laughs> they changed the, the the way people could invest before you actually got to do anything. So lots and lots of investors have been stung badly just out of the willy nilly, um, how do you say, changing of the ideas should have gone to be through the last couple of years. Yeah. And it's still been the same thing. People still don't know. He had made a, a statement, it was going to go. Now we're not sure what's going to happen. Are they going to keep the ca venture capital funds? Are they going to do um, where you can still donate money through an artist and so on and so forth and things like this? Yeah. Um, it's a mess. And to be honest with you, I stopped doing them. I actually stopped doing golden visas because I, I believe, from my point of view, and I'm not saying anything against anyone else who's doing golden visas at the moment, I just believe that even people who are buying properties in the likes of... Um, Alcastra de Sal. Alcastra de Sal is the low, the nearest residential area to Lisbon, which is about 80 kilometers away, where you can buy your property for, say, 280 if it's older than 30 years old, or 350, etc., or 400,000 that will qualify for a golden visa. And you can uh, supposedly rent it in the local market, etc. Once the golden visa goes away from there, the property's doubled over the last two or three years in El Castro right. South because of this. When the golden visa goes away from there, you've got loads of people that have loads of properties that should be built that now don't have a market for it to buy or to rent because now the market was a golden visa market. Before that, there was nobody there. It's a tiny little village, a small town, um, and they said that the selling point is Comporta, but to try and drive to Comporta, you're 35 maybe minutes away from it. So okay. it's 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 not Comporta and they're trying to start to come off the back of Comporta, Malides, etc. and so on. So for me, there was um, a lot of insecurity with regards to what would happen to people's investments, what would happen to people's money, and that's not something that I was willing to play with. So for that, I pulled out of the golden visa market completely um, because it, there just wasn't any uh, guarantees in any way of what way the government was going to go that you could secure somebody's investment that it was going to this is our next five or ten year plan you can only plan with this government six to eight months ahead you know that kind of way yeah, and right. if you weren't able to do something within six to eight months now i'm about to go to the middle east in september for a particular trade show um it's called uh, cityscape um looking at them for investors and so on to bring investors to portugal but not not through golden visa but actual investors that are looking to invest to to um create 
wealth, etc., and so on and so forth for them. Um, because we need to bring investors. Because the, the the financing in Europe right now, you're looking at six uh, percent on on borrowing for commercial reasons and so on and so forth. So um, you like to spread the risk rather than hold the risk. And the thing is that to bring investors here, the, you have to have a plan of action from A, as you would say, from what was it? From soup to nuts. Soup to nuts. <laughs> <laughs> they want to know um, what you're going to do, how steady the market is, what you're going to sell for, when you're going to sell it, when am I getting my money back, and how much am I going to get back? You know. Yeah. Anyway, of course, investors understand there's risks. But the one thing that everyone will look at is the political stability and the political mindset within a, in a, in a government and time frame and what's going to happen in the next. And this is always the question. What's the likelihood of in the next um, election, what's going to happen, who's going to come in, and so on? Because you're not talking a three- or four-year plan. Most of them are talking seven to ten years, this kind of investment roll around. So it's it's vital for everyone in Portugal that they get the, the government right. Yeah. And I know it's a, it's a, it's a social government. Everyone's very proud of the fact that it's a social government. But you're after seeing what it's after doing. It's after, by, by playing to let's say, the fan club um, <laughs> to keep you voted in. It's now after, let's say, 93% perception of them are not happy. So I believe they'll be out in the rear on the next election. Yeah, okay. Well, remember where you heard that first. Uh, Sir Lion H, uh, never trust the socialists in Portugal. They change the rules every three months. That's the sort of instability I think you might be talking about there, Bobby. Um, did you say Alsace de Sol was where this, this development is taking place? Because it's a beautiful there's town. A lot, there's a lot of investments uh, going on there. And right. um, they're and not just there, but in and around that area. And it's a nice area. Don't get me wrong. It's a lovely area. Probably, I love it. I believe, yeah. I believe within the next five, six years, it will be um, a very common commutable town into Lisbon because of yeah. the affordability things moving out. Yeah. And where people will find affordability is in Alcázar de Sal as soon as the Golden Visa moves out because people will want to sell and they will want to liquidate the assets that they bought. I spoke to someone the other day that had bought an Alcácer de Sal and bought a one-bedroom apartment for, I think it was 38 square meters or something like this, 38 square meters for 280,000 euros in Alcácer de Sal. Now, three, four years ago, you, you wouldn't have bought something like that, number one. You would have bought um, 100 square meters for probably about 200,000, 180,000. Yeah. That's the difference. Yes. Now, and this lady asked me, so what am I going to do? I said, well, you're going to lose your money. You're going to lose a lot of it. And it's not only um, you're going to lose, uh, get a big discount, but like you're going to be coming up against what's going to happen, what happened in 2000 and, and uh, I would say 10, 11, 12, where you had people coming in that had money. And then what it was, was they didn't just want to look for bargains. They wanted to look for what people wanted. Yeah. And this is our whole thing is to build to what people want, not not to um play the game play the market yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. It's about what people want because that's going to change and you will have a drop off on the lower end of the market the property values anyone who's holding out for for to buy in the low end in the next year and a half next but in the next year year and a half i can see 20 30 percent dropping off of the lower end of the market right across portugal um because of affordability issues and interest rates and so on and so forth but on the higher end of the market where the and i don't even mean the higher but even the middle class uh, higher anything over say 350 400,000 euros that will stabilize and even probably on the higher end will still increase because of the inward investment demand and um, the people that are moving to Portugal and the volume of money that they have to spend uh, versus what the, the Portuguese or the local market has to spend because of the system of the low salaries in Portugal and the high interest rates and the fact that the banks don't want to lend right now to the lower end. They're quite happy to lend to, to the American audience. Absolutely love the American audience. They love the international audience or they like the people who already have a house to sell and so on and so forth. So they just don't want to take any risk whatsoever because they know interest rates are very dodgy over the next couple of years. Next year, two years, interest rates are not going to fall that far, if at all. And I even see a little mini recession heading down the road. And when that will happen, but it'll be a mini and we'll turn around and then and only then um, you will see interest rates fall uh, after that, I believe. Okay, very interesting. Thank you for that. Um, on this matter then of, of how the politicians have managed or arguably mismanaged the golden visa situation, uh, the state rakes in 403 million on golden visas between January and June of this year, which is awkward for them, isn't it, really? Investment rose 27.5 
percent during the first half of 2023. Investment obtained by the Portuguese government through the Golden Foreigners. Are they calling them that? Golden Foreigners. <laughs> <laughs> Residence permit. Oh, the residence permit. A program rose 27.5% in the first half of the year to 403 million, according to calculations made by LUSA, based on statistical data from the country's Immigration and Border Service, CEF, um, who are concerned about their own future, of course. In the first six months of 2022, the, the attraction, the investment attraction program amounted to 316. So it it continued to grow. And it is like, it's, it's, it's awkward because... They don't want it. They don't like it. And it's a political football from a political point of view. But it's great revenue for the country. And is it great revenue? And is, is this spike because everyone was just rushing it to get the ball over the line in this last six months, Bobby? Absolutely. And and a lot of these people are are aware, I believe, at this stage that the properties that they're buying are, are now considered overvalued based on the fact that the values will fall as soon as the golden visa goes away. But yeah. they've no choice. So they're looking sort of for the the best of a bad situation because of um, the desperation of, of, of needing or wanting to have an opportunity for traveling into the Schengen area or yeah. um, maybe settling in Europe at some stage in the future, or even given there, as I said to you before, I would say 80% of people who did a golden visa was a plan B for their kids or plan yes. A for their kids to give them better opportunities um, worldwide because of the place of where they were born um they they found themselves at a disadvantage even though very very well educated etc and where they had brought themselves up but they still wanted to advance their kids opportunities going forward and that's why a lot of them done it and now imagine if they have brought this if they hadn't touched this at all as in let people invest in what they want to invest to or even sort of tailor it to government approved so in other words like i said before make housing for local market affordable housing for local market invest in this invest in this fund for how irish government did that invest in local housing for uh, uh, funds for local housing for local government or for local market needs it, it's a win-win of course Why nobody thought of this I, I it's it's beyond me it's it's just it, it just wasn't popular or whatever i don't know i just think they could have structured it a lot better i think originally fantastic idea it was actually well thought out um i believe the, the the wheels inside weren't properly greased with regards to Seth, um because also you had a situation where you had a um, a full house of civil servants that basically it was over and they had a rule they brought in one out sorry ten out one in something like this one had to leave before ten had to leave before you could hire one because it was a very heavy civil service at the time but when you have something that's making so much money for the country and you have a rule to say you can't hire any more people to process it it's not sense. right now those those people who invested in the last six months will not get a SEF appointment for probably two years really two years and this is i suppose what a lot of people don't tell them is that uh, SEF is such a mess right now and uh, yeah yeah once your once your um, application is in you're sorted yeah you yeah. are sorted provided political things don't change in the next whatever it is but it's two years typically now is the expected time to actually get the self appointment um and which which i'm bamboozled by because if you do the d2 it's three to four months you know what i mean so yeah, and d8s people are on d8s getting whisked through aren't they which which so, takes us back to our, where we started really um you might imagine mightn't you if you were one of these foreign investors who wanted to better the the options for yourself and your children if you were investing upwards of half a million, you might think, I'm investing a lot of money in your country. Do I not get a priority appointment? No, far from it. You're at the back of the queue. So there yeah. is a, there's no corruption there. I picked up four Golden Visa people the other day that had done the Golden Visa that are coming in to do their um, renewals. Um, and this is even the renewals are two years late. Two years late getting renewed. Cards are out of date two years. Okay. Oh. Okay. I spent four hours in the airport waiting for them. Oh, because, for, because they had a hold up with their paperwork coming through? No, no. It's just a queue coming through. Oh, just a, oh so they didn't get any, you know, they, they, on, on, they might have flown in first class and been happy in the lounge at the other end, but coming to Portugal as a golden visa investor, you're queuing up like everybody else. No corruption or special treatment there. I tell you what the attitude is that, listen, we did our bit. We invested, but you're treating us like crap. Yeah. Is, is, is it you just want their money and want us to go away? That's how they feel. 
you know he can understand that and i and i think that's the reality uh, right. as well there has been that within within the uh, as i said before i don't believe there's any corruption and so on so it's very limited but there is a um there is an arrogance uh, or whatever it is with people within those particular positions that just don't care um get to the back of the queue i don't care i, I told you before once i went to register a car i pulled the wrong ticket i waited an hour the lady at the, at the at the office where you do it says to me sorry but you pulled the wrong ticket um so i went back pulled the next ticket the one i was meant to and an hour later i got the same lady <laughs> that that exemplifies something that's going on here and something people need to understand and maybe one day when a movie is made about this and there's some sort of marlon brando character playing the politician um and there's a, a frustrated american saying look what do i need to do to get treated in a special way in your country that person in a smoky room says it's not about the money it's never been about the money yeah i don't know i just think that even when they invented the golden visa in 2012 there was 12 applications in the first year 12. you know why they never told anyone <laughs> okay they never told anyone they had no <laughs> program to get it out there so the first actual people that came to portugal with the was the chinese immigration companies who actually were sort of looking for these things and so on and so forth and, and they spot they came first and say okay i want to go on a visa and everyone's going what's going on visa so um, and then of course it, it it broadened out when you come up with a plan like this you have to plan the infrastructure like what you're going to do with a development or whatever it is you have to put in a project to manage this expectation yes. and so on and make it timely like at one stage we're talking about we're going to have a special staff office only for golden visas so we can miss these through because they're so important that these clients we really want to make sure we're getting the money into the country etc then the government changed okay and the world changed and they knew people like you bobby might be going around the world at your own expense uh marketing the golden visa on their behalf yeah. <laughs> for a little while anyway until it got completely ridiculous alcacer de sol a really nice town some of our best portuguese pals grew up there it is a lovely place i it's really lovely. loved it when i chanced upon it and it's very interesting the phenomenon to observe there what will happen with how it's been manipulated basically um on the basis that bobby describes their very interesting point from a 970 pedro if if you don't want corruption you can just legalize it by calling it <laughs> lobbying that's what we're yeah. familiar with in other countries isn't it it comes with the side effect that you also solve your political party finances very good <laughs> promotion for that man um and uh, james responding to that as well uh, yes i was going to say uh, the only reason uh, corruption in politics in the us is not a focus of conversation is that it's legal <laughs> So uh, to you, 970, Pedro, in the form of lobbying and corporate, in inverted commas, donations. I've uh, been an amazing conversation with you this morning, Bobby, as ever. Don't forget that fit, uh, half a million expats and illegal, illegal immigrants, there is no housing market that can accommodate them and more arrive every day. No need for a golden visa. Just come and you will be legal. Oh, that's sounding reminiscent of other <laughs> countries now, isn't it? I mean, maybe we are into that part of the curve here. Something's definitely occurring. Uh, with nearly one in 10 people being a foreigner here in Portugal. It's a very interesting time in this country's history, no question. Last, The last one that I want to put to you, Bobby, uh, given that you are um, basically working for the country around the world in the way that you've described, you always have, uh, and you've changed your tack slightly on how you are promoting Portugal. Is that confidence returning? You know, th this is what was a, in the conversation before, wasn't it? Is that, that these silly political moves that damage the confidence of inward investment coming into Portugal? Do you think that's better now? I think what people look at is when they're looking at investing, who they're investing with. And once they have all of the facts and understand that, um, because I think th the only way to really take someone in with investing into this country is to show them the sort of the nuts and bolts and the, the scars and the dirty parts as well. Because by doing that, they actually see, to be honest with you, number one, to see that this is a great place of opportunity. Yeah. Because it is, and I and don't mean this in any disrespectful way whatsoever. There's so much more that this country can do. I'm not saying it's, but, and, and a lot of people who come here, who visit here, who come to live here, whatever, see that. And like I did uh, over 10 years, 11 years ago, I saw the opportunity in Portugal, and a lot of other people are seeing it as well. And there is a fantastic, and I think actually the fact that the, the government itself had been so slow in moving things along has left it that there's still so much still to explore and still so much to do here. So they see that. And that's why investors are still very interested. And I actually think 
probably the biggest market we're going to have is um, Portugal has really started to become more widely known now, especially in the American market. It's sort of, it's a bit like those zombie movies. First fella gets bite and then he bites another and bites another. And that's starting to spread. <laughs> I'm so, sure we could come up with a better marketing campaign than that. <laughs> but it's that fast is how it's spreading now, I think, yes. in the US market. Like I remember before looking at the US market and uh, I won't say they didn't know where Portugal was, but just had no interest as such. I've been to Spain. Yeah, right. you know? But now they've actually started to realize it's a fantastic place to live and to, to visit, to retire. It's a European uh, country. It, it offers so much. And that's what's going to happen. I think you're going to have an influx of people looking to move here, live here, have hol more holiday homes here. I think Lisbon's going to expand. I think the businesses, etc. going to... Once we get a proper... And I, again, even you can put in the government, I still think that you even have a good government that wants to put in certain things. There has to be a huge shake up within the civil service uh, side of it as well, with oversight um, uh, that has to come back um, and basically clean up the, the, the silly things that just don't make sense, you know? And I think that's really where it needs to happen. But yeah, I do believe people will continue to invest here and not because of the government the way they have done it, but in spite of it that they actually see that there's still opportunity here.